all for your patience. We appreciate that. This will be the 3:30 uh, p.m. briefing for the Latuna Canyon Fire. Uh, we do have, as you see behind us, uh, representatives from all agencies. Uh, to simplify the message today, we're going to have the Los Angeles Fire Department Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas provide the information. However, any specific questions to these specific agencies, as you can see, members are here and would be happy to disseminate that. They're also all available for one-on-one -on -one questions afterwards. So, Fire Chief Terrazas. Thanks, Cap. Thank you all for being here. The Latuna Fire. Yesterday, about this time, 2 o'clock to be exact, we were dispatched to the original fire location just north of the 210. And we saw extremely erratic weather and wind. And that's what we're seeing now. Very erratic weather and wind. The wind can change directions. It, it can go 180 at 20 miles per hour within a few minutes. So very conscious of that. We're watching it. Uh, we're putting our people in places to protect structures where needed. We are in a unified command with the Glendale and Burbank Fire Departments. We're also being greatly assisted by the Los Angeles County Fire Department. So far, we have lost three structures. These structures, we had two on one lot in the Tahunga area, and we had a separate structure also in the Tahunga area. These three structures had no brush clearance. These three structures were isolated into the foothills, very difficult for us to protect. I can't encourage enough that all the property owners clear their brush a minimum of 200 feet in the city of Los Angeles. It gives our firefighters defensible space. In terms of large fixed wing aircraft, we had one retardant drop yesterday. We've had continuous drops today. They are working around the perimeter of the fire based on the immediate threat at the time. So their target is constantly changing. We do have a large animal evacuation center set up here at Hanson Dam. Small pets are allowed at any of the evacuation centers that I will mention. Now in terms of the evacuation areas, in the city of Los Angeles, we have the Sunland Park Center ready and uh, awaiting for any people that would like to relocate there. That is at 8651 Foothill Boulevard. There are a few mandatory evacuations in the city of Los Angeles. The first one's in the 1200 block of McGroarty Park area. We also have 1200 block of Warman south of Sunland. And we have one area, 1500 block of Morning Glow, south of Latuna. That information is located on our webpage, which you can go to at LAFD.org. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. Voluntary evacuations are in the area of Eileen, or Aileen, cross of Hillhaven. We have the Reverie area, as well as the Haynes Canyon area. That is voluntary evacuation. City of Glendale, they have as their evacuation center Crescentia, Crescenta Valley High School, located at 2100 Community Avenue. They have mandatory evacuations in the Glenwood Oaks area, as well as the New York Avenue area. They have, uh, that's also known as the Mountain Oaks area. Voluntary evacuation in the Whitingwood area, and they have information on Facebook as well. City of Burbank, they have evacuation centers set up at McCambridge Park, 1515 North Glen Oaks Boulevard. The mandatory evacuation, the main streets are Brace Canyon, Haven Way, and Viewcrest. That's all the information I have to share with you at this time. We can take a few questions. Two are definitely homes. The third one, we're not sure if it was a shed or a home. It's, it's, uh, there's significant damage to that one. 
acreage right now, we're standing on the 5,000 acres uh, number. We do have confidence it's actually greater than that. We just haven't had time to fly the perimeter with our helicopters. They're all deployed on the fire line. We're standing on 10%. Well, we have a lot of active parts of the fire. Once again, it's, uh, it's going to be based upon the wind direction, the erratic weather. Uh, at any moment, the priorities change based on that, that direction of wind. Chief, is there any uh, special protection to be given any of the high power lines that are coming from the area? We are making priority drops when we're notified that a transmission line is getting threatened. I've not gotten any information uh, to that effect. That's the amazing thing, and it's a blessing. There have been no lives lost, civilian or firefighter, and no firefighter injuries reported at this time. In terms of um, people who might be thinking about evacuating voluntarily, is there any areas you would say that they should take them seriously and voluntarily? Good question. I, I want, that reminds me to bring up our Ready, Set, Go program. Anybody living in a brush area should be ready. Anybody that living in a brush area where there's an active fire, you should be set, meaning you preload your car, put important documents, pets, pictures, loved ones, and then when we say go, listen to the media, social media, we'll put the word out. So the answer to your question is we don't have a specific area, but for the public to pay attention to the media, when we say the word go, we want them to go. As far as you know, there's only been three structures. No reports of any damage structures, just the three loss, losses we've had. Can you talk about how significant that is, given the size of this thing, that there's only been three structures lost? It's amazing. Uh, it, I've seen pictures of the uh, lost structures. These are isolated into the street, in the foothills structures. I think it shows the value of brush clearance. It shows the uh, expertise of our firefighters who have selected the parts of the community where we can make a defensible stand. And these were written off fairly early. It was a dangerous spot to put firefighters into. Because there was no brush clearance? No brush clearance in the location of the house. All right, thank you. We'll have another uh, media briefing in the next couple hours. Thank you very much.